Carl Gallagher wants to know about the shop towel I'm blowing my nose into. Hold on, let me put this back. Um, these are these are surgical towels, and I buy these on Amazon. They're not super cheap, but they're amazing. Let me first say that when it comes to shop rags, the most common kind of shop rag I have seen around the around the country are those red cheapo shop rags. They sell in the big plastic pillow of them. And those red shop rags are a scourge on existence. If they all disappeared tomorrow, I would not, uh, I, I would, I think the world would be better, frankly. Here's the reasons. They are super linty, which means they leave stuff on stuff. That's, I don't want that out of a shop rag. And their dye stains things. I don't want a shop rag to impart color to something I'm trying to clean color off of. I hate those rags. They're, they're just the worst. And then uh, years ago on Boing Boing, uh, Mark Fraunfelder talked about these, which are surgical towels. They've been used once, and then they sterilize them and throw them out because they're single use. Uh, so you buy them in batches. I just bought a batch of 50 on Amazon. Uh, I'll find a link and we can include it in the description. Um, no lint whatsoever. Uh, in some ways, these get better and better the older and more greasy that they get. I'm kind of thrifty about my shop supplies and I can't throw them out, so I have boxes of used rags that I still use. Like if I'm gonna clean a bunch of grease off of a tool I'm cleaning, I'll grab one of my oldest shop rags and use that to do the primary scraping. I love these. I love using terry cloth uh, for drying my hands, there's nothing better than that. The, but these are super absorbent. They are, I think, the platonic ideal of shop rags. And like I said, we'll we'll try and find a link for Amazon uh, because I buy them a couple times a year. Um, they're they're stellar. Uh, Marley Bretzo says, "I'm an odds and ends maker, all garage builds. I don't consistently have projects I'm working on, but when I do." I temporarily destroy my back hunching over for a few days or afternoons in a row. Yeah, I feel you, brother. Um, we've been doing some puzzling in our house. We broke, we broke out the, uh, we have a puzzle board with drawers in it that we bought over COVID like everyone did. And uh, yeah, uh, when you're leaning over the table looking for puzzle pieces, your back can certainly start to hurt as does mine. And my, a friend of mine actually threw her back out puzzling. Um, but, uh, Marley wants to know, are there any routines or practices, exercises, stretches, yoga that you do to help your body handle the abuse of the lifting, hunching and working on the ceiling kind of contortions that the body goes through during long hours on projects? Um, yeah, yeah uh, yes. And it gets, it gets worse the older you get. Um, you know, everything starts to hurt a little bit. But uh, I do a lot of really making sure that I am addressing the work. Uh, my stools here, my, I have two of these, these medical style uh, stools and they're both set at different levels actually because I use them in different parts of the shop and their levels are attenuated to the benches that they sit at. Um, I do, I'm lucky that I have never had carpal tunnel syndrome, although I've had some of the small harbingers of it. I have always been really, really assiduous about, I mean, literally since the beginning of, because carpal tunnel syndrome was a thing back in the early 90s when I was starting out making stuff for theater. Um, and I took that to heart. So I was always making sure, I have always made sure that uh, I am not doing too much of this pinching stuff because that's where the yeah I've had some friends who have had their lives upturned by carpal tunnel syndrome um I definitely I mean the hard part about the back pain when you're working and you've set yourself wrong is that the moment it starts to hurt it's going to keep hurting for a few hours that's the that's the roughest part of that um so it's like sometimes you've got to suffer through it I do I do do stretching I have started to actually uh, do some regular reps with just some small hand weights to start to bring back my muscle mass. Um, 
And I change up my position a lot. I change up my position a lot. Like if my back started hurting while I'm doing this, I'm not above actually putting an apple box on the table and standing up completely and working down like this. Um, I definitely have always recognized that switching out positions is, is really important. I mean, I've, yeah, it's, it's often neglected by people. And for me, making is such a pleasure that when some part of me hurts while I'm doing it, it's a really sad moment. So I have avoided that my whole life. I also have the example of like, my older brothers were contractors, and, you know, like they harmed their bodies, like lifting bricks up ladders onto roofs when they were teenagers. So I, I, I've had, I've had cautionary tales and good guidance from my family and friends over the years to, uh, to do these practices, i.e. Um, make sure I'm addressing my work in a way that's comfortable, making sure that my seating in my shop allows me to do that intuitively. Um, I don't do much yoga and I don't do much stretching and I don't do much exercising. Um, I'm mostly just on my feet. I'm actually on my feet for like seven hours a day. Um, yeah, I think I've given a kind of a weirdly nonlinear answer, but I hope that is an answer. Uh, if you have other mitigations that you do for uh, the comfort of your body in a shop, I'd love to hear about them in the comments because those are, those are worth sharing with each other. Yeah, making stuff can be really hard on your body. Even sitting there and doing stuff like this, you know, really small motions can really start to, to can really start to cause some harm. Uh, David T says, what do you have on in the background, if anything, to help you focus while you work? I can't have silence, but I can't have anything too interesting to distract me from my work. What do you do? That is a great point. Um, I like pop music. Um, Recently, I've been listening to a lot of Maggie Rogers. Uh, I love the sound of her voice and her songwriting. Uh, I also listen to a lot of James Taylor. I listen to a lot of Sean Colvin. Um, my musical tastes have always been very varied. Someone once said that all I wanted to hear was chicks whining about the ocean. I love me some Enya. Um, it's music. It's music that I have on in the background. And like you, I don't want substantive programming. I couldn't possibly work and listen to podcasts at the same time. I don't have that kind of brain. Um, in fact, I've learned over the years that it's the reason I get tired while driving is not because I have any natural proclivity to get tired while driving. It's that if I'm driving and listening to something like a book on tape or a podcast or NPR, that's what makes me tired. I can't drive and listen to substantive information at the same time. However, you put on like Justin Bieber or Lord, and I can drive for 12 hours at a stretch. Um, I love pop music. I really do have an abiding love of pop music. Uh, frequently sweeping up, I will put on 24 Karat Magic, Bruno Mars, or Dynamite. <laughs> uh, yeah, K-pop is great. Like I said, I love pop music. Um, and I mean, I. This comes from growing up on pop music. I spent at least a decade every weekend in my room playing with Legos, listening to Casey Kasem's Top 40 Countdown on American radio. Like, that is my childhood. That is the, the soundtrack of my childhood. And later on, I, you know, I got some more esoteric tastes. I fell in love with Laurie Anderson and Joan Armatrading and some amazing, amazing musicians and artists and, and, and storytellers like that. But yeah, pop music. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.